Welcome, welcome to Pivotal Moments with Lolita. I am so happy to have you joining us today. As you know, we've been talking about how to pivot. Everyone is thinking about that this year. There's so much going on and many people both professionally and personally have had to make many pivots. Are you struggling with how to do that? Do you need a little inspiration? Well, I think today's guest will give you just that inspiration. So I am happy to introduce that I have Alethea with me today, who's going to share her experience with making pivots. Alethea, welcome and introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Lita One. Thank you so much for having me on this. I appreciate it. So my name is Alethea Gay, and I own Alexander Q Health and Wellness. And Alexander Q Health and Wellness is pretty much that, a health and wellness agency that works with you from the inside out. It's all about taking who you are, first appreciating that, and then pivoting, right? Showing yeah. you a new way of living life, if that's your goal. Sometimes it takes people, it gives people an opportunity to see where they are and that they're already standing in their greatness. So Alexander Q is just your opportunity to either build from the inside out or just understand that you're standing in greatness right now, which is all of us, but then we all have goals, right? So let's get into the conversation about pivoting. So when have you had to make a pivot in your life? Okay, okay. Well, you know what? It's so funny because as I answered the question, you know when someone asks you about your business and you're like, I didn't say that. So what we also <laughs> we're personal training and we take health and what and we offer health and wellness coaching in terms of changing your diet, etc. And the reason why I mentioned that our health and wellness programs change changing your diet or just your state of mind is because the reason why I started in fitness itself was I would come home from school. And it was, I was in college and my mom would be in front of the television and she would just be working out, working her heart out. And then at night I would see my mother praying. And what I realized was that, or I didn't realize at the time was that was her medicine. Let me back up a bit further. My mom is a three time cancer survivor. Wow. And the first time that she was diagnosed with cancer, I attributed it to the doctors. I, I was like, that's the doctors. They did it. Great medicine. That's how cancer can be fought and beat, right? She just happened to get a really good doctor this time. The second time that she was diagnosed with cancer, that was, the, that was really scary because at that point she was like, okay, they're saying it came back and I'm going to have to go through chemo. So she does the workouts. She said, I'm going to give it six months to a year and I'm just going to work my heart out. And she went back to the doctor and she said, it's gone. And I said, well, Ma, the only thing I saw you doing was standing in front of the computer. And I mean, standing in front, they didn't have computers. We didn't have computers. We had the TV with the big old tube in the back of it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Ma, the only thing I saw you doing was working out and then, you know, pray it, thank God. But, you know, is God that powerful? Is that, you? I, I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up at a place where you question God at times because you couldn't believe how rough or how much people could suffer. And I really didn't understand the source of suffering then. So again, I was like, mom, well, what did, you know, what did you do? And she was like, Leafy, it was me exercising. And they said it was me meditating, prayer and meditation. Still didn't hit me then. So I'm going out and I'm, I'm eating what I want to eat. But something did I didn't realize she planted a seed. She was planting a seed that entire time. So I go throughout my twenties. Finally, I, I do a little, you know, I pick up running and stuff like that, but not too much, N not doing too much. It really didn't hit me then. And then I hit 30 and I was pregnant with my daughter and I gained a hundred. I was at 190 pounds. So I gained about 60 pounds and I went back to my doctor and she was like, you gotta you, you gotta re-examine how you're eating she said this isn't healthy you're gaining weight too fast it's gonna be hard for you to burn off yeah. and it hit me that okay well who do i know who who is an example of someone that i know because i've always looked for personal examples i knew tv was t tv after a certain age who did i know mom 
So I went back to my mother and I was like, Ma, I, I, I have to lose this weight. She's saying that. And she also told me at the time, she said, um, you're borderline cancer. So I'm like, Ma, what do I do? And I'm, I'm just afraid. I did my research. I did all of that. But I wanted this miracle that this woman had shown me. What was her miracle? What worked for her? And she was like, well, Lethe, you, you're going to have to work out. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to believe God in his word. You have to, you got to get on your knees at night. And so I did, again, I picked up a little more fitness and I started going to the gym and I said, okay, well, let me get a trainer. I'm going to lose this weight. Oh, let me back. I did have my daughter finally. I'm not still pregnant. All right. 13 <laughs> years later. <laughs> like in the story lady. Right. So I started going to the gym, but still I wasn't in my body yet if that makes any sense. It took mm -hmm. me years to get in my body. Mm. So I take a cycle class and I meet a guy named Vernon. And so during a class, he's like, you know what? I want to become a cycling instructor. I'm like, all right, boy, you go ahead and you do it. Cause I sure didn't see it for myself. Yeah. And then during one class, my mentor, she uh, announces to everyone, they have a cycling certification coming up. And I looked at him and I was like, there's your chance. And he looked at me and said, why not you? Wow. wow. And I thought, oh. wow, for someone to see even more in me. So here's mom already telling me, well, you got to work out. You got to pray. You got to meditate. Showing me, you got to go to God. You got to get in touch with your body. And then here's someone else saying no. And now it's not only time for you to get in touch with your body and do the exercising and the working out, but now you're going to have to go out and reach other people. And that was when... I began my pivot. Wow. One of I many. love it. I love this One story because <laughs> you took us on a journey. And see, yeah. sometimes when people think about making a pivot, they think it has to be quick moments. I quickly made this pivot or something happened. I quickly made it. But I love what you're sharing because this took some time. Your pivot was a long term pivot. And wow, kudos to you, though. Kudos to you. Yes. So let's yes. get even, let's yes. dig even deeper. So one of the things that I found to be very fascinating about pivots and pivotal moments is that a pivotal moment, um, I never made the connection between pivotal moment and the word pivot. But what I found in kind of digging deeper is that that pivotal moment is called that because it really is about that, that moment, that important thing, that value piece that causes you to make the adjustment around that while keeping that center. So with you, when you think about, you know, the pivots that you made, what did you learn was a pivotal moment for you? What, what, what did you find was your thing that was important and centered to you? What, what I believe, because like I said, I saw her working out. I knew my mom had cancer. And that may have resulted in other ways of me pivoting, but that pivotal moment was sitting in that doctor's office. And knowing that I was going to have a baby yeah, and she may have to grow up living that same way. So when she told me, you are borderline cancer, I knew at that moment that my daughter, I did not want my daughter to live through that. That, was, that had to be the moment where I was like, because when it's other people, you can say, oh, I feel for you. Oh, let me try that. Oh, maybe that will work for me. But yeah. when it's you, it's for you. Wow. Ooh. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. That's, that's real. That's real right there. Mm -hmm. You know, so we talked about pivoting. We talked about those pivotal moments. But now let's switch a little bit and talk about adjustments, because one of the things, again, that I found to be interesting is that while pivots do take a, some form of an adjustment, I found it interesting that the definition is slightly different. And I, and I always read this because I think it's important to note adjustment is defined as the process of adapting or becoming used to a new situation. So that's slightly different than pivoting, right? So in your, your life, when have you found that you had to make that adjustment rather than to pivot? Ooh. 
you know, I, <laughs> oh boy, let me not go down another rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, this one right here. So when did I have to make the adjustment? You know, if I think of when I, as I heard you read that definition, the tangible aspect of adjustment came to mind, the actual doing. Yeah. So when I think of pivot, I, I'm thinking probably also in my state of mind, shifting the way that I was thinking. Mm -hmm. When I think of adjusting, like what did I have to now go out and do? Yes. And what I had to do in terms of changing my behaviors is I had to I had to write down and this this for some people may work may not work it doesn't work for me much now because I can do a lot of it here but I really had to take a look at what I was already doing so mm. how can you adjust if you don't have any idea where you are like I needed mm. a measuring stick yeah in order to make that adjustment so I took a look at my weight. I took a look at my schedule. I took a look at my eating behaviors. I took a look at my activity level. I took all of that into consideration and I adjusted, not just my way of pivoted, not just in my way of thinking and adjusted, not in just my way of thinking, but adjusted my way of eating. So I found different diets. And then I learned later on, okay, well, eating is a lifestyle. So this is how I, I need to eat to be yeah. healthy. Yeah. I looked at my schedule and I said, you know what? I have to adjust my schedule and make time to exercise. So I have to physically write down, okay, from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., I'm going to work out. And then 7, et cetera. So yeah. when I think of adjustments, I had to make it in so many different areas of my life because they all had to converge in order for me to be successful. Wow, girl, you are you are <laughs> dropping some <laughs> some really good gems here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, we've come kind of to the to the to the end, the, the last track here. And okay. this is your time to share any last minute thoughts, inspirational quotes, whatever you've got that you really want to say. This is my message to you, to the viewers. What what would you like to share? Failing is a part of life. And if you're going to fail, fail up. Fail up. Get back up and take a look at how you're already living, what's currently going on in your life, your lifestyle. And then see if there's anything that needs to be changed or adjusted. Listen, I, I'm not a big fan of listening to other people, allowing them to tell you how to live life. But sometimes people see things that you don't. Mm. And just know your truths. Pray on your truths. Pay for it to be revealed to you. Yeah. And then if, when you hit that pivotal moment, you fail, you fail up, you get up, and you go ahead and you make adjustments and understand that that's not going to, that may not be just one time in life. Yeah. That may happen over the course of life. And that's why I say when you fail, you fail up. Because if you fall, you can always get back up. Oh, you're going to have me tear up. <laughs> that is good. That is so encouraging. So, so encouraging. Alethea, thank you. Thank you so much for thank having you. this conversation. And I know you've inspired me and I know people will be inspired and encouraged by just hearing the things that you shared today. Thank yes. you for having me. Thank you. Absolutely. I enjoyed you. I enjoyed talking to you from like our first conversation. I was like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank so, you so much. And I'll be sure to uh, point everyone, make sure you check out the links and the information on Alethea so you can see all about what she's doing. Yes. And once again, this has been another super episode of Pivotal Moments with Lolita. Thank you for tuning in and be inspired and be encouraged. Until next time. <laughs>